I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Welcome to the Q&A, everyone. We're going to start out this session uh, with a little bit of an update from Forrest. And while she can't say it was specifically Sasquatch-related, I, I want to preface it by saying, uh, and we were discussing this just before we started the recording, that it's very, very, very similar to what we recorded in July in the mountains. Uh, so Forrest, go ahead and take it away and give us the update before we start doing the questions. Okay, well, I'll just <clears throat> I'll uh, do a sidebar here. You know, you and we were talking, and I was going to get back with Tom the other day on, uh, or, or yesterday, actually, on something that I wanted to tell him about. And um, I had gotten... I got sick to my stomach. I got rather ill, and I was just explaining to you gentlemen why I had gotten ill, because I had not slept all the night before, and then had to go do a bunch of running around, and I started out on an empty stomach and didn't eat till like 3 o'clock in the afternoon, which is probably what, uh, you know, caused me to be uh, ill. But anyway, all that aside, then I started telling you all about, you know, what it ha had gone on all night long. And this started at like about 9.30 in the evening and uh, progressed all the way until the next morning because I didn't actually go to sleep until like 10 after 7 in the morning, <clears throat> the next morning, yesterday morning, Thursday, I mean Wednesday, excuse me. And um, so it was just a very, very peculiar night. And I'm not usually one that gets frightened very easily, but I actually, I'm not going to lie to you, I was starting to get fearful. And I really, I don't know whether to be say I was fearful of my life. I was just fearful that something was going on that, that wasn't right. Because um, I started hearing this banging noise. And I thought, and this was about 930. And I thought at first that well, my, my neighbors must be doing something. You know, I couldn't, uh, but I just couldn't figure out what they were doing. And, uh, and sometimes it actually sounded like it was somebody beating on something metal. And I even thought, well, maybe it's the horses. And I, at that point in time, at 930, I did take my spotlight and I went outside and I was looking around and I didn't see anything. And, of course, <clears throat> it was kind of strange because I came back in and my daughter called me shortly after that. And she's like, Mom, you have no business roaming around there at that time of night out in the dark. You just don't know what's going on. Uh, you know, especially with all the problems we're having here in Texas. So anyway, so uh, I it was right after I got off the phone with her, and it couldn't have been too much after 10 o'clock that I'm hearing this noise again. And it always sounded like it was coming out down, down out in the direction of my barn. But, I mean, <clears throat> there was nothing in there that, it didn't sound, I've heard my horses kicking the walls and this, that, and the other, or kicking one of the metal um, tubs or troughs. I've heard all that. It didn't sound like that because it was like bang, bang, bang. And then a pause and you'd hear a bang. And then there'd be another bang, 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 bang. And then bang, bang. There was no rhythm to it, like if somebody, and that, that at 9.30, I actually thought, well, maybe it's my neighbor hammering on something or, you know, doing something with a sledgehammer or something, and that's usually rhythmic. Uh, right, this, right. There was nothing nothing rhythmic about any of this. Well, and see, this we, went on all night long, Yeah, we even we, up till right before dawn. We recorded the same thing out in the middle of nowhere in the mountains of, of uh, Oregon last July, so... Um, it didn't go on quite as long. We we waited for quite some time and listened, Tom, and, you know, you were there. Of course, you recorded with your phone, and then we have um, uh, much higher-grade quality recording that Adam has, but um, um, it was exactly the same. It was just started out in the middle of nowhere, um, and it was not rhythmic at all. It was loud, really loud. 
Well, that's what this was. It was extremely loud, and I, I'm just like thinking, well, maybe I should go around and talk to some of my neighbors and see if they heard anything. And, and of course, my next very next door neighbor to the west, he is now deceased. And then <clears throat> my neighbor that's directly to the east of me, um, uh, well, we won't discuss that person, uh, but uh, it didn't sound like it was coming from his property. And, uh, I mean, it actually sounded like it was right here on my property, and that was just what was really very disconcerting about the whole thing because, I mean, uh, today we actually walked down there around the barn and everything thinking that, you know, uh, maybe somebody somebody was breaking into something, but you wouldn't have thought it would took them all night long to do that if they were trying to do it. So, uh, (laughs) you know, they would have succeeded after the first few bangs. I, but, uh, I, I guess I would ask listeners: Have you? Has anyone out there come across this type of thing before? Well, yeah, that's a good point. Well, it just it just makes me kind of uh, you know because I think I what was it about a couple of weeks ago that I told you about uh, my friend Anita and I were down there. Um, she had been out here looking at uh, some colts of mine and was wanting to purchase one and. Uh, um, we were actually walking from the barn area back up towards the house, and and <clears throat> the first thing she noticed was some change on the ground, and um, I thought that was kind of strange. And then the next thing we saw was the great big boot print, and it was about a size twelve or thirteen boot print. I was some, uh, you know, somebody with a good size foot, foot, and then um, so we're following the the boot print, and then. That's when she actually said, she says, stop, stop, you know, look at that, look at that. And sure enough, there were <laughs> barefoot prints in there, and they weren't human barefoot prints. And um, they actually were about the same size as those uh, prints that I showed, uh, sent you all the pictures of uh, that we'd seen out there in the dirt before. Those were the 14-inch uh, ones, right? Yeah, they were about 14 inches. And... Um, and it was like, and then we started laughing because then it was like, oh, I wonder who was tracking who. And I don't think it was the the the, the person wearing the boots that was tracking the, the 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 barefoot prints. I think it was the other way around. So, um, you know, maybe I've got some guardian angels out here, and I didn't even know it. So, anyway. <laughs> well, you know, given given all the activity on your property, that banging and and how similar it was to what we recorded. Um, you know, certainly leans my thinking in that direction that was the same thing what we heard. Hmm. I, I wonder, you know, you got to wonder about the purpose of that. What is the, what's behind all of that? I, I mean, and of course too. now, <laughs> you know, you get, you get chimpanzees that will, great, and but they now usually, they will pick up pieces of wood and bang on trees and bang on anything actually that's available. Um, including other chimpanzees. But, but isn't, uh, that, isn't that a display uh, of some kind? That's usually a display, or uh, and, and it's usually uh, you know mixed with anger. It's not like, oh, let's just do this for funsies. So, uh, you know, that is usually you know pretty much a display of uh, being annoyed and very annoyed and angry. Well, Tom, you know, from what we heard in July, I would say... <laughs> With the, the loudness and, and the intensity of it, I would say that was anger-driven, wouldn't you? It was absolutely. I felt that 100% I did too. that it was, yeah, it was uh, very angry. Now, I will say this, um, and we had no idea we are going there, right? It was the last second I said, Spoiler hey, let's pull moment. in here and we'll set up the equipment. But we were in the middle of a uh, huckleberry patch, very large one. And I went back there two weeks later, and Will, just like you said, uh, the huckleberries had been stripped off leaves and all. I've never seen yeah. that before. Yeah, yeah. I was I was showing Tom and, and Adam um, what I had found before in the past, where, and you don't see it very often, but sometimes when Sasquatches are supplementing their diet with vegetable material, you know, berries and leaves, things like that. Uh, they don't just pick them because their hands are really big. They strip them. They strip the entire, you know, you're left with a, um, a big patch 
uh, of whatever it is they're eating, usually just the stalks are left. And I've seen, you know, 30 uh, patches 30 feet across where everything in that patch was stripped and all you were left with was bare stems. Just bare stems, yeah. Yeah, gorillas do that too. So. I, you know, we'll never know for sure, but I can't help but wondering if they were uh, agitated because maybe they thought we were encroaching on their uh, I don't dessert think, patch. I don't think they knew we were there. I, I just, I don't, I don't think they knew. I think it was between them. Yeah, it was loud. And then they there was, uh, and, and I'm certain that they banged the side of that uh, excavator or the bucket. Uh, the logging equipment. I don't know. I mean, and, we, we uh, over there, and nothing was disturbed. So I'm kind of scratching my head about that one. Yeah, but it was noisy and definitely caught our attention. Well, so let's, let's go ahead and dive into the questions. We got about uh, 20 minutes here, so okay. And actually, I want I just want to say a real quick announcement here. Uh, again, folks, you guys have. Uh, our, our listeners have excellent questions, and the questions that you guys ask are the questions that are on so many other people's minds. So if you have a question and you're a little hesitant, send it our way. It's um, it's probably one that is many, many, many other listeners have wondered about. So uh, send those to questions at creekdevil.com. And if you like the show, we love to know. Uh, click the like button if you haven't subscribed click the subscribe and if you want to support us that helps us a bunch to get out in the field uh, there's a link to patreon in the description in youtube you know what other people okay. say in their shows is that you know clicking the like button really helps with the algorithm it helps their shows grow so if, if you folks could click the like button we'd really appreciate that it'd be a big help also it thank is. you for the questions we've gotten so far for mr black um, there's no such thing as too many questions or whatever it is you want to ask him. Uh, the more, the better. The fact, the, the more we get, the sooner we can record the next session with him. And, uh, and then we'll decide when we're going to start putting those shows on. So, but questions, folks, send us questions. Questions. And, and again, feeding the like button, it's kind of like watering your garden. So it keeps it growing. Yeah. It's All a, right. It's a big deal, I guess, to YouTube. So. We'd appreciate they like it. it. We'd appreciate yep. it. Mathematics. Okay. Um, so here's a question. Do you think Bigfoot hunts for trophy similar to what's in the movie Predator? I think a lot of things in this movie were taken from Bigfoot phenomena. Who knows? Could be. Um, but it was made for a sci-fi and alien movie. Um, so what do you think? What Will Forrest? If- if I were to have a guess, and I guess that's what I do have here, um, given their level of intelligence, I would say it's possible. It's something we don't know, but it's certainly a possibility. What do you think, Forrest? Well, I think you're entirely correct. Anything's possible because we don't know anything for sure. Um, and it's obvious that they have a much higher degree of intelligence than your average, uh, you know, ape. So um, I think they're I think they're just right up there, right below us, it, it, you know. And it's probably in some ways, as far as their environment and stuff, they're probably smarter than us. So it would not surprise me in the least. Interesting. I don't want to be a trophy. <laughs> no, uh. <laughs> I don't want to be a head on the wall. <laughs> no, no. Well, here's the thing. Well. How many times have we talked about where they cache um, human objects, you know, things that, you know, everything from um, surveying equipment to clothing to shiny objects to, unfortunately, um, what appears to be, it looks like they cache cache away bones, not Mm -hmm. only animal bones, but we think maybe uh, human bones as well. Um, So... Well, they will cache. No. They will cache bones, um, but that's that's not the same as like the other the human equipment, you know, clothing and tents and things like that. Um, the cache of bones that's more, you know, for like lean times, almost like 
you know you're, you're saving it for a rainy day so to speak if you're kind of lean on food you can go to the cache and you know um, but the other objects might very well be a form of um, trophies yeah so it does seem like um, they seem to take an interest in some of our artifacts I guess you know the shiny things and boots and bits of clothing and and we've even heard you know like i said where they have found a cache that had a whole range of everything from you know surveying uh equipment all the way to you know through through like early 1900s up until the 80s yeah we had a guy who used to be part of the jrg in colorado and they were up in the mountains uh, cross country and he was telling me they found a hole in this little ravine a whole bunch of stuff uh i mean a lot and and he said it wasn't a camp it was just like random stuff in this little ravine and he couldn't figure out how it got way up where it was well and there was a uh, news article i read a couple of years ago where some guys were hiking in I don't remember if it was Colorado or California, but they had found a cave that was really, really difficult to finding the cave was hard enough, spotting it and then getting to it was pretty tough. When they got in there, it was packed with stuff like this. And you're like, Okay, who does this? And why? I know I What's guess the you, purpose. I, I guess you if you were out finding something like that, you might think and I might think. <laughs> Oh, maybe it was some homeless person up here just squirreling things away because you see the stuff that oftentimes are in these shopping carts uh, that homeless people push around and, and there's just all sorts of unrelated items in them and you don't even know if they're useful to the person. They're just in there. Um, but, you know, the, the key is it's out in the middle of nowhere. So Location, location, location. Exactly. Exactly. Well, you know, crows and kangaroo don't. I think it's a kangaroo rat do the same thing. They, uh, right. you know, take in totally unrelated objects. It's like, oh, I like this. I'm going to take it. You know, and uh, you know, Bigfoot could be reacting the exact same way. Oh, I think this is pretty. It's just a pretty rock, or it's a a nice shiny thing that this uh, human dropped. I think I'll take it. You know, so they obviously don't want it. They dropped it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Or I took the human, and then I took the shiny well, things from the human. And I took the shiny <laughs> things off the human. <laughs> oh, <Back> boy. <laughs> we've, we've entered a whole new dimension there. <laughs> right, right. We're not going to go too too far down that road. No, let's, let's go into the next question. <laughs> All right. Well, this isn't exactly a question, Will, but this is a um, – I think you forwarded this to me. Somebody sent you – no, they sent it to questions at creekdevil.com. Uh, a gentleman named Robert uh, had a video with a deer with a broken neck. And although it's not a question per se, it is interesting. This deer, do you know the one I'm talking about, Will? Uh, I don't offhand. It was a YouTube video where this guy was filming a deer. It ran into the brush, <clears throat> ran out of the brush. When it came out of the brush, it had a snapped neck. It was still on its feet with a broken neck. Yes, yes. Oh, that's different. Very odd. I, I have plenty of pictures that people have sent me of things they found where, you know, heads are twisted around and and all sorts of things like that. But that's that's a different one. I mean, that's fresh. Very fresh. I mean, it was, it was in perfect condition one moment, and it ran past the guy and took off into the brush, and then it came out of the brush. And it obviously had a snap neck. It was still alive, but probably not for long. I wonder, though, why would they snap a neck and just let it go? I understand, you know, like the guy we interviewed who uh, watched these things, you know, chase a group of deer and they were hobbling them by breaking their front legs. And then they would come back yeah. and police up the, you know, the hobbled deer. But, um, and I understand that that makes sense doing something like that if you're going to try to go for as many as you can in a group of deer you're chasing, but uh, why would you break a neck of one and just let it go? Well, maybe they snapped the neck and the thing may have, you know, may have just been grabbing it and the thing somehow managed to get away, you yeah, know. Or, or kicked them and they didn't want to be injured. Yeah. 
Yeah, it could be. And deer, people don't realize this, deer can be... Uh, Pretty ornery. <laughs> they can be very ornery. They can kick, and if they have antlers, this one didn't. But the ones that do have antlers can uh, cause a lot of damage. There have been stories with hunters getting mauled. <laughs> what would you think about snakes. that, Forrest? What, about... Uh... Deers doing damage to a person? No, about the 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 deer running into the woods and then coming back out with a oh, broken neck. Oh, yeah, that that is very, that is peculiar. Uh, but then, I mean, maybe it snapped its neck and uh, and not even knowing that the the other other human hunter was there. And uh, um, I mean, did the the guy actually pick up the deer after that, or did uh, what what happened? Uh, what transpired after the deer came out of the brush? Yeah, that would be my question too. Well, it took off running down the road. The deer did? With a, with a yeah, the deer hand? did. Yeah, it, it, it was still alive. And yeah. the odd thing is there were some vehicles around. It was nighttime. There were some vehicles around. And, and they, they were in the area of a power line cut. And it, actually, when it ran away from them, it ran towards uh, some vehicles down the road. So, hmm. odd. That is rather odd. But you know, you hear about them, uh, about big Bigfoot. When I was, I'm saying them uh, hunting and uh, using those uh, utility and telephone, co- you know, uh, areas a lot for mo- to move around. And and you deer are out there too uh, that will they will browse and graze in those things. They do around here mm-hmm. where they cut them through for the utility utility lines and telephone poles and such. You know, I guess the creature, yeah. if, if if that's what did do this, you know, if let the deer go, it depends on the level of experience an individual has, too. I mean, it may have been a more or a lesser experienced individual, you know, in killing a deer. Maybe it was its first time and, uh, you know, grabbed the thing, broke its neck, and then for whatever reason let go. Well, or just waited for it to run until it died, and obviously, uh, whoever the end of the human individual obviously didn't follow the deer. So who's to know what happened? You know, a <laughs> hundred yards down the road. Yeah, I so, wouldn't think it would live too long with a broken neck. No, I wouldn't think so either. You know, I mean, I've seen some deer do some strange things, even when they've been shot. So, oh yeah, uh, you know, follow blood trails for half a mile and you wouldn't have thought it would have got a hundred feet exactly yeah same here all right tom what do we got next okay um here we got a few questions from a, from a listener and these are great questions um so question number one is are any of us that you know will you and i and the, the team are we trying to collect DNA samples from Sasquatch. He said, I thought some kind of a trap like food offering or other enticement might provide a means to get a likely, you know, get some hair or some other way to to get a uh, um, hair sample and DNA sample. So have we considered this? And would we like to get DNA samples or is it not one of our priorities at this point? Um, it's not a huge priority, but that doesn't mean we wouldn't be interested in collecting DNA samples. Well, here's a question kind of along the same lines for Forrest. I was uh, watching a uh, documentary or something on, on DNA, and you not only have to have the DNA, but you have to have specific markers to check it against. Forrest, do you have any thoughts on this? For example, if you get a... Uh, you do get a bit uh, what you think is a Sasquatch DNA sample. Um, you need markers that are maybe primate and human and whatever else to check it against. Well, yeah, you've got to have the, uh, you know, you've always have to have that comparison sample. Uh, and, of course, we have plenty of human DNA and we have plenty of primate human. Uh, pri- <laughs> Excuse me, primate DNA. Uh, not being a geneticist, uh, I can't really get into the specifics of addressing that. But, you know, as long as you've got comparative samples, uh, you can, uh, uh, you know, compare it against human and uh, primate. But, you know, primates, uh, you know, like your chimpanzees share <clears throat> almost 
exclusively 99% of their DNA with humans. Um, so it would not be uncommon um, to have DNA from be, uh, that you might collect from uh, a supposed Bigfoot sample that would uh, almost match, say, a chimpanzee um, with little or no variation. And um, so, and then I think I told you all once before that even within chimpanzees, of course, you've got your pan troglodytes, which are your common chimps, and you've got your bonobos, which are uh, a smaller, you know, and I, I, this is a side more here that, that people need to understand that when you're looking at chimpanzees, performing chimpanzees, even the circuses the, on TV, when they've got chimpanzees acting and such as that, most generally, those are what are considered bonobos. There are smaller chimpanzees. They don't get as big as the others, and uh, they are far easier to work with. Um, they're just a real passive, you know, chimpanzee. And even between those two groups, they have a genetic uh, difference in that the bonobos have 16% of their DNA that is uh, common in common with humans, but not in common with the pan troglodytes, so, which is the common gem. So even within the, the those clo- very closely related primates, you've got a, a big deviation there so i mean to get dna from um and you hear a lot of people say well um <clears throat> that uh dna has been done on bigfoot and they have uh, they show that they're uh they're mu- that they have a human mother side and uh, the other is uh the father is unknown primate well they have to understand when they're looking at the matrilineal line that doesn't mean that that bigfoot had a human mother uh, there's no women volunteering to be uh, the mothers and babysitting, uh, you know, Bigfoot. I, I guarantee you, um, they may have shared human DNA on that side of their uh, DNA, but that doesn't mean that they had a female mother out there. And uh, I, I, I don't even want to even think. And one that. thing but people anyway. <laughs> one thing people don't understand either. They always say, "Oh, you know, if, if Sasquatch had, you know, shared ninety seven percent of the same DNA as humans, then they're human." You have to understand that other three percent is a really, really huge difference. Well, look at chimpanzees. I mean, they share almost ninety nine percent of their DNA with us. Yes, and I mean. I've seen some pretty hairy humans in my lifetime. I'm sure you guys have too, but I haven't ever seen too many of them that look like chimpanzees. So, um, you know, I, it works the same way with Bigfoot. So, I mean, it's just that small little infinitesimal percentage that makes them Bigfoot and makes us human. Makes us we we are the naked ape. When people look at a human, they need to look at us and say, "This is a naked ape." Mm-hmm. Well. I know there are more questions from that person, isn't there, Tom? I th- yeah, he has a couple more here. Okay. She, I'm not sure who it we're, is. Gonna, um, we're gonna save those for next for Tuesday, okay? Because uh, we're just about out of time in this session, folks. Any any final thoughts here before we wrap this piece up? Yes, thank you for your questions. Uh, keep them coming. Questions at creekdevil.com. Um, this is your show, folks, so send your questions our way, and uh, we love to answer them. We love to hear about them. So uh, thank you again. Excellent questions. There's no, 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 no wrong questions. Forrest, if you find out why they're beating on things, maybe we'll figure out what we heard in July. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, guys? I'm not walking all the way down from my house to the barn to go look and see what they're beating on. <laughs> They can just beat to their heart's content, but I, you know, I, I will admit, I, it started to kind of get to me. I was I'll like, tell you what, it, it what kind of creep, happen next? It creeped <laughs> us out when we heard that, and that was two. I remember I, I looked at my watch; it was two twenty in the morning, and we all just kind of froze and looked at each other, like, "What the heck was that?" Well, there was only about a two-hour period. Uh, it would have been Wednesday morning that 
I actually was not hearing anything. But what really got me, and I think I, uh, y'all probably sensed that, that got me really disturbed was when I actually, it sounded like something was trying to get in the, the, on the other end of the mobile home. And then my, my Lagatha, my Belgian Malinois in the house was going crazy. And she was looking out the window like she had seen something. And I, like I said, I don't know whether it was a human or what was going on out there. But my other dog, he didn't even come out of his doghouse. He was inside of his doghouse barking. Yep, and they, they both were going. <laughs> they, knew. <laughs> they knew something was going on. Yeah. Well, keep us posted, and folks, stay oh, tuned. <laughs> stay tuned for the Saturday show. Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's William J E V N I N G at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open out there.